Yeah, I got some notes. Sweet. Hey everybody, this is Sheets. And, you know, we have a special treat today. As you guys know, I always like to have people on who, you know, I think are either up and comers or just in general, people who I respect. And you guys always ask me like what other types of content I like to watch myself, you know, and, and we always have those guys on here. Like, uh, for example, as, as we, as we get into more of what, uh, what DFS PhD does, one of the things he, he accesses is he, he's a big fan of the sports projections website the one that uh, that analyzes uniqueness and things like that. We had that guy on here like a couple of months ago to talk about uh, to talk about his site and things like that. And so, listen, I figured I would have him on here talk about his history and DFS, talk about what he does and all this stuff, and uh, just kind of have some fun. So, I he, I have his site. Well, you'll tell me more about the other stuff you have going on, but um, I have his YouTube channel up here, DFS PhD. He's his screen name is Bone is Bone Dog. And I guess, tell me, you know, tell me how you got into DFS. Tell me if you were one of the sports. What, were you a guy who liked sports and then decided to want to gamble on it? Were you a gambler who wanted to DFS? Were you a math guy who just regards these guys as just kind of like data points on a spreadsheet? Is there people like that too? Where, where, where do you come from as far as DFS goes? So a little bit of everything. I mean, so I went to, you know, all the nerd schools and stuff. So definitely math guy box and, uh, Originally got into DFS for a lot of sports to kind of try to relate to people like more because they like to talk about sports a lot. And I could know what was going on in baseball if I played baseball DFS or, you know, same thing with like football DFS or whatever. But basketball, I played basketball in college. Like I, I know basketball. I've coached a little basketball. So that's something where like there's a no ball element in addition to all the other math stuff as well. Um, yeah. Where did you, where guess, did you play? Where did you play? MIT undergrad so nice, yeah. nice. it was you know not not the not D1 but I know what it takes to sit on the bench of a uh, of college basketball team I went and, I went I went to Brandeis and know all about low level sports hey no we play the same conference yeah exactly. Brandeis I played there twice a year for well you know home and away we played you guys that's right that's right but you're but, but, you're, you know, but so, you're at you're at you're at you're, you do ph are you a phd uh candidate is that uh, no I already graduated yeah 10 years ago now so I okay. went to Caltech for my my phd um chemistry but like physics is probably more what most people would think of that sort of thing as and yeah so uh that was like a nice eight seven years and that was during the period between like when with hey kitty cat when we weren't went to uh like when i graduated college there just wasn't any dfs right so like and i've never really lived in a legal sports betting state so i've never really developed any legal sports betting stuff so it was kind of in grad school where i, I became aware of dfs and became a casual player you know late in grad school because you know you have a little bit more time in grad school to finish things up and uh it became pretty clear also that like so why get so educated getting a chemistry phd first of all you don't uh, plan it and second of all you don't think about what options are available to you i didn't really think about like i didn't really want to work in a pharmaceutical company and that's basically the end game for that so like i don't want to you know create some sort of a thing and then they don't use it because it's, it's not it's an actual cure not a palliative measure you know i just didn't think the incentives were aligned with my actual work that i've done my whole life so yeah i became a candy marketer for a while so that's why my marketing skills are okay you can see my brand out there and stuff scheduled posting and stuff that's because i've done that as a, like a head of a reasonably large e-commerce company for a while and several of them along the way but Turns out that's not a real secure job market being the e-commerce marketing guy, you know, so that's uh so you wanted something more steady and secure. So you figured you'd play GPPs in, uh, in DFS, right? Exactly. No, no cash games, nothing easy, only the tough stuff. Do you ever play any of the other stuff? You ever play poke? You ever play online poker, or you you, you skip that? My my brother's the poker guy. He's like so much better at than me at it that like I've always felt like nah, I can't even get started with that, you know, because he's he's in Vegas, you know, every three months for something and yeah he's he's on the yeah on the circuit shall we say he's not like pro pro level he has another job still but that's the main reason i haven't gotten into poker also just like same reason i don't get into sport like the not sports gambling obviously it's not legal in california but the um the pick em game things that are like sports gambling i still do those but it's like i get 10 percent roi from that and like way more from dfs so it's just a time issue you know like i I could stay by my phone all day for late news and try to get the right picks right when there's late news, which seems like the only edge there is in that. Or with DFS, I can do the same thing for like during the slate and it feels like slightly more important. I don't know why that feels better. It is the exact same thing with late swapping basketball. How long, but, yeah. how, how long have you been playing DFS? Like semi-regularly, I guess. 
I guess probably close to five years, but yeah, like I say, even three years of that was so casual, like not even watching any content, not like, so probably about two and a half years ago, I started watching DKDF underscore DFS. And that's where I got like, really understood what I was doing when I started playing the game, you know, trying to like in GPPs, how to win and stuff. Oh, very cool. Nice package. But yeah, so it's been a few years and like I'd say probably about a year and a half since I joined SaberSim. So two and a half years ago, I tried the stochastic thing. I was like getting into the NFL, whatever. I, I figured I'd try it, combine a couple of touts with like, you know, I'd been listening to their free stuff for a while and it just didn't work for me. Like I didn't make any money from it. And so I did the same thing starting last year with NFL with SaberSim and I didn't bank, but I made like enough money my first weekend to be like, okay, cool. And like, for my background, like I understood what's going on with Sims, like in my PhD, I ran millions and billions of Sims of very boring stuff, not fun like this, but I, I kind of know how to relate to a Sim and like how to e evaluate it in a physical sense, if that makes sense. So I, I think it fit my play style pretty well. And so once I found Saber Sims, kind of things took off for me. And, and currently I'd say, yeah, that's definitely the biggest edge I have is in, it's not, I don't do the contest Sims. You've probably seen some of my content is about how to beat the contest sim people without paying for contest sims. It's basically just because I don't, all the big contests I play are GPPs. And in a GPP, I can do the contest sim for you right now. Did you win? You made money. Did you not win? You did not make money. That's basically the entire sim. And so like, I think you can capture the important parts with biasing the game sim results. So game, we already have sims, you know, like I'm already paying for some level of game simulations. And for me, like evaluating each slate starts with the pace of the game. Because I don't think people are starting, like however they're setting Vegas lines is more than that. And I, I think it's simple as that. Like for DFS purposes, the number of possessions in a game is more or less proportional to the points scored. So I, I start every day by changing to, you know, the games to the pace. And what that does in the current version of Saber Sim, I just love it. The way they take a, it doesn't just like move everybody's points up, whatever, six points or, you know, something like that. It really takes a subsample of the overall game space that had that average, which is so awesome. I mean, it's not going to be Gaussian or whatever still, but at least my subsample is still game. Like it just perfectly distributes the points among the players. So yeah, that's my Wait, biggest edge right now. Well, let's go back for a second. Okay. So, so we're heading into this direction. So just to flex a little bit, like I, I know, um, I know Andy, the CEO of Saberson, like way back from poker, like before, like sit, before Roto grinders exist. You know what I mean? Like, like, yeah, I just watched the video of you guys did uh, him breaking down the new stuff. I, I hadn't seen some of that, like exactly what's going on with the live updates and stuff. So that was a good, good. Yeah, video. And, and when I got into um to DFS, you know, it was it was post you know lineup HQ, but pre Saberson, you know. So I was in that same yeah. portion view. There were optimizers out there, but there was nothing that really you know did anything for GPPs. Never, never had up correlation issues. Never had upside stuff. Never had anything. So when Andy and you know that group came up with Saberson. I was like one of the first, you know, adopters of it, you know, and I was like, you know, the first person to like support him and, and all this stuff. And I always found that that really, really interesting, you know, that that kind of development um, from just your your standard optimizer. Um, now, here's like a question I guess I have for you just to get a read, read into it. Then I want to go back to, you know, what, what types of things you play. One thing that people would always ask me, because I was like the resident Sabersome expert forever, right, is is how many changes do you make? Um, in in Sabersim, you know, you know, how many groups do you make? How many exposure things you make? What what do you change about it? And my initial thoughts, and you talked about this, is my initial thoughts is if Sabersim is actually running Saber uh, game sims, okay, and you believe that, okay, because there was a while where I just really thought I didn't, they yeah. say they're running Saber sims. <laughs> I don't see any proof of that. Maybe it's just another projection. Right? So if, right. if they're actually running Sabersim and doing what they say they're doing and coming up with different buckets of results based on how games can go in my head. I'm like, well, why would I want to make rules that, that, that impact what those Sims are going to put out. Right. Um, sure. and, and then I would come, I, but then I would like actually run stuff and I would see basketball lineups just didn't make any sense to me. Like I'd have like two centers from the same team, just like stuff that just didn't make sense. And the, but I, in my head, I'm like, but wait, but Saber Sim is running the game Sims. Why on earth? What I, what, what I, and now when I see you, I mean, one of, one of the things that, that, one of the things that, uh, that, that, that he does is when he talks about his, you know, his, his process, he says, okay, I'm going to use Saberson, but first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make a couple of rules, I'm make a couple of adjustments, make a couple of rules. I'm going to play max one, one run back here, max one tight end here. How do you rec as a very, very smart person, you know, how, how do you reconcile those two constructs? Like on the one hand, Saberson's supposed to, you know, make it so you don't have to make rules. 
Sure. No, that's true. Like, so I, I did not make any rules, first of all, for like my first two big hits. You can get up to like 10K hits pretty easy in Saber Sim with no native rules at all. I mean, those weren't even showdowns. So I didn't even need all the stuff I do with geometric mean ownership that you know how to do e easily. But I think the rules and stuff becomes necessary on smaller slates and bigger slates for different reasons. Uh, mostly smaller slates, though. Like, you don't need to be playing a backup center tonight with 10 games in play. Like, I, that's almost every slate. I'm going to tell you to play Bassey a little bit when you're playing Collins, play whatever, Hartenstein when you're playing Mitchell Robinson. One of those guys is going to smash on those teams, and the, the latter guy is always 0.1%. But the reason I like uh, I like biasing, I, I make a lot of changes. So currently, at this point in the season, a lot of changes, and primarily to the game totals, because... I don't know where those are coming from. And like, I'll look at them every night and it's just not where I think the games are going to be. So I try to make the teams that I think are going to score the most points, score the most points. That's like the very first thing. So way too many changes now, but for the last few days, I've had a pretty good ROI. So we're still in the few days of testing of it, but this setup seems like it's working pretty well for now. The other thing I'm doing when I do do rules, smaller slates and stuff, is I'm using rules to renormalize my distribution. So these Saber Sim distributions, even if they are doing what they're saying, are going to capture the realities of a center, right? And a center has foul trouble and non-foul trouble results. He's not got a like center modal distribution. And so when I bias the center, like Mitchell Robinson or whatever, to 36, what I'm trying to do is to get it to take the subset of distributions that has him not in foul trouble. I don't really think he's going to average 36. I'm just trying to bias their game set distribution to the ones where he's not in foul trouble because I'm going to handle when he's in foul trouble with the rule, do not choose both Mitchell Robinson and, and Hartenstein. And, and I'm also going to limit both of those to 15% because I understand, yeah, this is like rolling the dice, whether or not these guys get in the game at all. Although, like, we're getting 0.1% on backup centers every single slate. Is the foul trouble probability 0.1%? No, it's easy leverage. Like, if I were 150 maxing every slate, I'd be playing, like, five of every single backup center. That's, like, the easiest leverage on the board every single slate. To me, like, tonight, you got somebody versus Embiid. You're always going to have somebody versus Embiid or somebody versus uh, Giannis. Although Giannis is having less success with that, like, his move, like the one from the finals where he goes into somebody, gets the foul and goes up with it. He's getting that called an offensive foul like 50-50 this year. So I'm not sure like, is he going to keep doing Anyway, so the longer term stuff. But oh yeah, um, I also have a playlist for like big um, big picture stuff. So just to help people like onboarding and stuff. Yep. Um, just wanted to mention that because yeah. I'm, so sharing, like, I'm sharing all that right now, by the way. Sweet. Yeah, just make sure everybody sees that. Um, yeah. That's the only thing from this website. Obviously, the old NBA stuff immediately becomes non-evergreen. So it was important a few months ago to get some evergreen stuff up there for the half of every day where I have no content live. Well, so. well you play you play basketball, and obviously you taught basketball really, really well. So I guess I'll go back to like, what what other sports do you play besides basketball and I guess in football? Like, do you play the other other sports? I I do, and I gave some advice for MLB. I'm slightly lifetime positive on MLB, but yeah, I mean, just in terms of like ROI. The two sports you should probably listen to me on are NBA and NFL. And I'm not doing like I play hockey, but I'm not making videos for hockey. I know that my stats are not good on hockey. I have to hone that process more. I don't know if it involves more contest review. I'm just playing the 50 cent. That's another thing, though. My brother's printing in hockey. I know it's possible. Somebody can have a good process with hockey. It's just I do not have that process yet. Do, I like to watch it, too. Like do, I have ESPN Plus. So. Do you play MMA? Yeah, you know, MMA is a great, just like a pure DFS sport. Love it so much in terms of just every, yeah, now that I have a little bit of cash out there, I'm always throwing 20 out there just because every slate feels like a sweat. Like last week, the last fight goes the other way, 10,000 plus. The week before, the last fight goes the other way, 10,000 plus. I'm sure that's always how it's going to be because I'm not going to be playing the favorite in the last fight in order to win a lot of money, but you know. It's, so, uh, so, I, so, you, so you're more inclined as a person, though, to, to, to play the sports that you that I'm trying to get, you know, profile here, to play the sports that, you know, as opposed to, you know, just you're, you're not like the guy that just re, re, that regards an, an ADC in, in LOL as just a, as like the same thing as playing a, uh, you know, a, a pitcher in baseball. You actually enjoy the sports to some degree. That, that yeah. Yeah. Play. And I mean, you did. I, I did. I did enjoy League of Legends when there was that, you know, half a year where that was the only sport available because it's got teams and stuff. So, you know, but yeah, that's still I'm not going to play the world's whatever, even though I still enjoy the gambling of League of Legends because I'm not going to watch four hours of that in the morning right now, generally. So do, do, do you do you feel that the sports and this is a sort of loaded question, but maybe not. Do you feel the sports, you know, the best, um, I guess, number one, you, you make more changes on. And number two, do you think that you're. I guess I have, have to answer yes, but maybe not. Like the the the, do you think that you have a bigger edge 
uh, on the sports that you know the best, like the no the no ball question? I'm asking that in a weird. I'm way. not sure. I, you know, I, I obviously I can say yes from my ROI. ROI has been higher highest in basketball, and it's like way higher. So I should say yes. But I mean, it's based on like one big win, pretty much at this point. It makes and, it and if it's based on one bad big win, let's let's get deeper into it. Did did, did that big win become uh, be, uh, occur because of the edge you have you know what i mean or like it was was it it because of of some change you made or or whatever because i'll tell you like we go through all my biggest scores like almost every like big score involved like i got a a, like a 50 lineup piece it would be like the 48th you know best lineup that saberson happened to have run for me that i never would have come up with in a million years i mean honestly like like my that's the way mine actually happened I got so lucky. So, I mean, first of all, I'm, I haven't even mentioned the satellite strategy, but I'm not 150 maxing every night. I wasn't even, yeah, no, I was 20 maxing all last year, but like, so I'm, I'm still 20 maxing. I think that's where my ROI is, but I I'm also grinding uh, positive EV satellites wherever they are. So everywhere there's a satellite I'm playing it right now. There's a lot of high money, like these 888 satellites and $2,500 satellites that are not filling every single night. So that's free money. And helps me kind of build up that bankroll in the background. And so for game one of the finals, I had 90 something tickets. So I was playing, uh, I should have been playing more conservatively, honestly, but I felt like it was game one of the finals. We didn't know what rotations were going to be like. And we had had, I think at the time there were three or four, whatever, with with the existing rosters, we had two games or something like that, at least one in January or something. We had two. <laughs> and, and in those games, we had like, uh, Haywood Highsmith was playing like 30 minutes and we had sites projecting him for like 16 minutes. So I knew it was possible he would DNP because he had DNP for like the entire previous round. We have the Jersey up, obviously we know how it ends, but the, uh, you know, I, DK was on him as well. And so because of this, like both the history and DK, my, one of my like head council of dudes member being on him, that gave me the confidence to play 13% Haywood Highwood, Highwood captain and like 30% in flex, like 10 X him all over the place. So there's definitely that night, and I mean, I'm not even sure. I definitely had rules because, I mean, with the Heat, you have very firm rotation. So you could say max two out of whatever it was, Struess and Highsmith and whoever Caleb Martin would close in that. So you would definitely have those kinds of things where you need to boost all three of them because all three could close. And then you say max two out of three close. So I was definitely already doing that at the time. And, I mean, just game one of the finals for sure. I, I didn't have, like, contest look back at the time, and it's not loaded back in there in Saber Sim recently. But I'm pretty sure I had the highest ROI of anybody in game one of the finals. I had the unique first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh lineup that night. It was ridiculous. I try not to dwell too much on how the fourth one was completely unique because that is something I probably should have been paying attention to more during the sweat. I was just too happy to be winning $90,000 to be worrying about it. But yeah, so game two was the same thing. Like game two, I also won, but it was like a bigger chop. So who cares? It was like $15,000. But the main thing was in game two, winning the tournament of champions ticket from game one, right? It was like a... 80 person chop. So anyway, that was a fun game too. But in both cases, I mean, I just was picking what was happening. In game two, I said, hey, Max Struess had a bad game one. What if he doesn't? You know, like let's definitely bias the Max Struess and then let's limit it to 30% in flex and 15% captain. And I'm going to pick that lineup for my tournament champions one, whatever the best Max Struess captain lineup was. And then Max Struess come out, is on fire the first quarter and I'm ahead the entire game for the tournament champions. So anyway, this, but for both of those, it was biasing projections and and in terms of where is the where could you possibly get edge on contest sims people right because like somebody was saying in you know whenever i'm tweeting out those sports projection stuff people are always like wow 90 percent of these people lost money yeah of course they did like what do you what do you think happens with 150 maxers when the first prize is three thousand dollars every one of them lost money they put two thousand dollars in and like second prize is 200 there's no way to make money we all understand this but everybody's sim ROI is positive, right? Like at the beginning of that game, all those guys are running sims, right? Like at this point, what, 30, 40, at least of those um, 150 maxers are running those sims. And so it's not the case that 10% of their sims say they're positive. Everybody's sims that they're relying on say they're positive. It's just that their sims take into account, right? Like what are those taking into account? It's all those underlying projections. So that's where I just feel like it seems like mostly, at least with Sabre score, pretty linearly correlated ROI with... um, with the Sabre score. So I, I already have a proxy. They've already been developing it for a long time. I think until they make it so I can't pay for the, the Sabre score thing, I'm going to just use that and not pay up for the more advanced tool. So well, one of the, one of the things again, that, uh, that he does really, really well is he, he, he's become part of a sort of his, uh, his 
temporary brand sort of is, is, is he, as soon as like a big showdown slate happens, he goes right into sports projections and he, he analyzed the uniqueness of this and, 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 and unique uh, percentages, how many uniques people have. And that's, that's become like a pretty cool, um, it's a, almost a subset of, of DFS, honestly, like, I, like the, the sports where uniqueness almost trumps, you know, lineup construction and, 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 and projections and things like that, you know, on, on, a, on a less violent scale, there would be like MMA, like MME, MMA is pretty much like that because you'll have like anywhere between 11 to 14 fight slates, whatever. And once you get to 11 fight slates, it's so funny. Like I, like this past week, there's a 14 fight slate. I didn't even know how to play anymore because I was <laughs> used to all the funny business you have to do with like 11 game slate. 11 right. You just slates, take a few you underdogs. Know? Yeah. You know, I'm like, okay, these are the guys I like. So here's the guys I can't play. You know what I mean? Unless I'm leaving 80, 80,000 on the table, whatever. And, and, for, and, and the thing about the uniqueness for showdowns, it's, you have to really play it this way to kind of understand it. Like you have to like commit to playing in that fashion and you'll see every once in a while how valuable it is to have a, a single unique as opposed to even like a good looking 12 unique thing. I mean, there's like some showdown slate where just a couple of weeks ago, I was like in ninth or something like that, but I was in a unique lineup and I literally needed like one like pass out of like, I figured it was some guy from Miami or whatever it is to, to if he got a touchdown, it won like $250,000. Okay. Right. Didn't happen. Came in like 400 or whatever it was, you know, whatever it is. And, but, but, but no one else near me had a chance right to, to get that, whatever. And, and, and you have to really, I guess you have to play it that way because I, I listen, I talked to a lot of people with DFS and not that many people really commit. I mean, if you're going to, if you're going to play that way, you have to really commit to playing that way. Um, or you're just gonna like be like so it's too way too psyched for a 21 person chop. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and, yeah. And, and so 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 he does a really really good job of that. Um, here's here's a question I have, and this is like interesting question. So you're obviously developing your site, you're developing whatever. What what are you looking to do? Are you looking to not not that these are mutually exclusive, but are you looking to make money in DFS, or, or are you looking to you know to to okay. make money in content? You know, or, yeah. or or both. I mean, both is tough, you know. Um, yeah. But 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 what what are you what are you looking to accomplish here? Because I have a pretty cool compliment for you. Hold on one second. Okay. Hey, I'm in the middle of a call. Can I call you back? Okay. Okay. It'll be like forty minutes now. Yes. Yes, I would do it today. Um. Um, no, I forgot what I was saying, but yes. Okay. So, so when you answer that, I have, I have a very, very, very useful compliment for you, um, in a, in a minute, but what, what are you looking to do? I mean, are you looking to, to make a fortune in DFS? Are you looking to develop your site here? You're looking, so, yeah. to, what are you looking to do? I, I, a little column A, a little column B. So obviously I'm looking to make money in DFS, but there's, there's just enough edge that I feel like, you know, I can only 150 max. So there's just so many different lineups. I don't really feel like you're giving away the edge. My wife asked me that question all the time. Like there's just, that's, that's not a significant proportion of the entries. Like knowing that 150 max does not cover a lot of entries is like pretty important. So, but I think, yeah, I haven't really decided exactly. Obviously you can make a Lagrangian optimizer. I should do that. You have all the data for all the different sites. You can probably break down how much each site weighs each component of thing. That's kind of interesting to me, but I, I kind of, I don't want to get my gut out of it. So I'm not really inclined towards that. I guess the, I, I'd seen underdog fantasy had a um, thing for responsible gambling companies. So I kind of have, I have a an idea for a startup there that's based on, you know, I have this Iowa gambling task to hone your process thing. The Iowa gambling task is mostly used to find problem gamblers. So kind of, I'm trying to figure out, can you adapt a card check test to underdog or daily uh, DK, something like that to, to help you know, identify problem gambling earlier. It, it's also correlated with like Parkinson's and stuff. So you don't have to just be like, oh, you're, you're locked out of the game, whatever. You should just, it can be kind of a nicer, hey, maybe check with your doctor, watch some videos like this kind of thing in terms of how the company's treated. Obviously, nobody's going to have a gate to like the website, but you know, I think there's a reason why underdogs raising money for um, responsible gambling startups. And it's that no real reason to start one and i can't really figure out the business model of how to make money from it so i think it's going to have to be a uh what, what's the word for a non-profit so yeah i 
I'm figuring that out still. I'm not mentioning the name of it because I have not trademarked anything, but that's the general principle of things is I think that people are underuse, underutilizing research related to gambling in analyzing their own gambling processes. So that's, you know, since well, I am coming me, from. Let me let me stray from what I'm going to continue this, this this kind of line of question in a minute, but I will stray by by, by suggesting this. So we have um, one of the, my, my kind of side business, well, sorry, side projects um, is we have a, a sports betting app that what it does is it downloads your betting history and it identifies your biases. Okay. Hmm. It says, okay, like, are you like that much more likely to play like home underdogs? Are you that much more likely to play teams from the big 10? Are you most more, more likely to play with, and how do you do in those types of things? You know what I mean? Over a, a large sample size. And, and I, I bring that up to you only because like in DFS, like you see people all the time say stuff like, oh my God, every time I play Kyle Lowry, he busts. You know, every time I do this, he busts. It, well, is that actually true? You know what I mean? Like, or, or is it, wouldn't it be cool if you knew like how you did when you play like point guard chalk or like, and some people say, well, I, I only like to, Malik Monk, Malik Monk is a guy you don't want to play as chalk. You want to play as low owned. Is that actually true? You know, like how do these guys actually do when they're chalk relative to everybody else? And, and again, you talk about, you know, assessing your, your gambling habits even for DFS from a, from a, I don't know, I think it would be useful for you to be able to analyze your own play in some way, you know, to see, you know, what, what types of people you tend to play and, and, and how you do from an, however you want to measure it, from an expected ROI or from an actual results or whatever uh, on how you do. I mean, I, I only bring this up because and this is why here's kind of a compliment. So I, I don't know if you are, you know, if your plan is to continue this site, you know, to kind of teach people how to play, like to get subscribers, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if that's what you want to do, but here, here is my, this is my diatribe. I'm actually going to be going on um, that, that Lowell's thing on Thursday. Uh, mm -hmm. Those, those guys are going to be talking to me about whatever they want to talk to me about. And what, one of my, my pet peeves about, uh, about DFS content and content providers is this. And, and I want people, if anybody's listening to this, they can, they can dispute this with me. I have not, it was, you know, DK, you know, some people, you remember, there has not been a site yet in my opinion, that actually teaches people how to play, like at all, okay? Um, people, they give plays, they give cores, they give this. And yes, they give tools, whatever, whatever but they've never actually, no one actually teaches people how to use their tools to create a process that's repeatable. And, and, and that's, that was my kind of goal into this, into this process and into this content. I mean, you mentioned you should promote yourself more. I, I'm not, I'm so over that. You know what I mean? I'm not interested. I don't know if you know, I, back in the day, I used to do a poker training site. You know, we were the first, first poker training site, you know, ever. And it eventually got, you know, it got overwhelmed by, by people did better, whatever, but, but whatever. And so when I look at DFS, you know, we, one of the reasons I do this is that's kind of like my goal because people ask me, how do you play? I actually try to show people actually how to play. I, I pull up my Saber Sim, I run projections, I run my stuff, and I say, okay, if I have an opinion on that, how exactly do I employ that? Do I do I X a guy out? Do I this? And I actually show, you know, until DF, DK yells at me for showing lineups, I'm going to keep doing it, you know, uh, I, I'm exactly like the way I'm building and just actually giving people a repeatable process. And the reason I bring this up as a compliment is, is you're like literally the only person that's come close, in my opinion, without even meaning to, to actually showing people what you do like, on a regular basis, as opposed to, you know, I like, uh, what was the guy's name? I like Simi Fahoko or whatever, like, yeah, you know, right, I, right. I, I like this or I like that. I, I like a, a, a site to explain to me how that's, to, to, a, to a person who really wants to make money, how that's really particularly relevant. And someone says to me, oh, dude, I, I really love Robert Covington today. But what, what does that even do for me? You know what I right. mean? Like, what is, even if someone said to me, okay, uh, I think that uh, XYZ is a great low owned play. What does that do for me? You know what I mean? Like, like I, you have to show somebody how to use the tools and how to use the recommendations at your disposal. Like, you know what I used to do? Like, here's for example, when I first got in, this is like really embarrassing, but when I first got into uh, DFS, I listened to the morning grind like every night. OK, and back way back then, that was when uh, it was Stevie and uh, the hell's the guy's name. And uh, uh, now, 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 now I'm, now I'm lost. But now he's the guy that plays darts. Now, Stevie T's TPFL and somebody else, whatever the guy's name. guy who plays darts. And now I can't remember his name. Did Arbor Pro. He always played used to play the backup quarterbacks. And right. now Siege. Oh, Siege. Okay, Siege. Yeah. Okay. Siege. So he they, these guys did the morning, the morning grind and they did the morning grind game at the end. I literally. 
like at the morning grind, I would write down like their favorite morning grind stuff. And I would make a rule that I would get at least 10% of it. Like that would be like literally yeah. like what I would do. And if whoever their bust was, I would do max 30%. And this is when you're learning, try to figure out what to do, you know? And and it would be nice for, you know, if you're someone's going to pay and like say, listen, teach me how to play, for if someone to actually teach me how to play, you know, like instead of saying, here are my, here are my 30 best plays, you know. Right. And then obviously if six of them come in, I'm going to brag about it the next day, you know, or something like that. You know, instead, here's 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 what you should actually do to become a better player. And and you, if you decided you were going to go that route, you could probably succeed at it. And this because here's the problem. I have like a million ideas of what's what, what people should do. And I have a million ideas of how to play and how to use the tools at their disposal. But to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not as good at other people at that. You know, and there are people that could do a better job of explaining that crap than I am, you know. So like, like, for example, like you know a hell of a lot more about like the underlying math of some of this stuff than I do. And if you could and if you could learn how to actually simplify that for, for other people, I mean, you would be one of the very few people if you decided to go this route to actually help people and teach people how to play. Because I do feel that and again, I'm, I'm rambling. OK, but. But I do feel as though it, that that underlying whatever else you're tr you're trying to do here is this caring about stuff other than you know just you know who to play. You know, you talked about the Iowa gambling stuff. You talk about big chisters, the, the knowing yourself stuff. You started talking. You started talking about something else. There's something obviously more to your brain and your life that than than whether Simi Fajoko is a good play. You know what right. I mean? Like, so, yeah, yeah. So, so let me let me just say a little bit of how about how I conceptualize this, like being a tout or whatever, and and how you derive your power as a tout, stuff like that. I kind of view it as being an oracle. Like we have an ancient tradition of people who predicted the future using uncertain terms, right? And part of what oracles did back in the day is they both tried to predict the future, kept it vague enough to more or less always be right, and were neutral, right? So that's kind of the three parts of being an oracle. And I'm not sure how to to round like um being neutral like that's the reason people from different you know powerful people from different places care what the oracle says is because they know the oracle isn't biased and so that's where like obviously I, i'm very interested in knowing my own biases as a gambler but once you, once i'm selling people something i'm just not sure how um yeah like if if my role as oracle is compromised so yeah i definitely see what to sell people i understand like i make a story of the slate every day i wake up in the morning i watch all my different council of dudes show break down if then statements about everything, single thing. And then through the day, every news item that comes in, make a little note, make a little note. I can just share that thing. And then, you know, obviously we have the discord as well. So people are already saying that to each other in there, saying it to me. I mean, people are more active than you in your own discord is the coolest thing in the world. I love communities like that. Like, cause these good, I mean, and that's how I found out you have true DFS. You're not doing self-promotion. I've been like interacting with you on Twitter for a while, but one of your dudes in my discord is like, Hey, you should check out this guy's site just to our premium. I forget. It might've been even shark chat. But somebody like, I see you in the top 10 of uniques every time. That is clearly a way you're doing that. It's obvious. I mean, thanks for sharing it with us too. Like people share research with me all the time. That's one of the best possible things about being, you know, uh, somewhere between Oracle and analyst, right? Is that other people come to you with their theories and stuff. And I'm, I'm happy to, I'm not, I'm never going to share those unless people tell me on air, it's okay to share them. But at the same time, I love knowing like what you guys are doing and like, I'm not, I can't do it. Like, like last night I was trying, you know, I, I, your process is so consistent. I know I just have to make the geo mean 19 and I'm going to get to my unique lineups, but I don't want to play that much man hurts. It's just too gross. Right. You know, right. like whatever decision it is at the end of the day, I'm just not able to get there on some slates. Obviously I like, that's kind of where I think maybe optimal is for me is like starting with trying to win uniquely and seeing if it's possible. And then after that's seeing it. if it's possible, then I kind of just kind of like, that's what I do with MMA is I see if it's possible. And then I kind of, pare it down to where lineups I kind of like are because with MMA you were talking about knowing ball earlier and I had the thought like that's probably where I feel the second most confident behind NBA that I'm doing the right thing every time is MMA and I don't know ball at all I don't even like to watch MMA like I don't I'm never going to tune into these things I'm going to watch whatever there's just so many stats associated with it. I love statistics I love going like MMA DFS is my guy there he has the big sheet he has every single statistic related to this fight in terms of uh betting odds every these are efficient markets right like I can just assume these are efficient markets and take that strategy because like assuming these are efficient markets there's the best strategy to be played in MMA so I uh I just play that strategy every week and it seems good but yeah it's uh it was for all of these I think the question winds up being because I've said it's all about winning right so then how do you make that into a more 
real question that it's all about what is the win probability distribution look like with salary? How far do the 0.2, 0.3% probable lineups go? Do they go a couple hundred? Do they go a, a, a couple thousand? Because some NFL slates, some MMA slates, you have live dogs. And like for real, I think that distribution goes a couple thousand and you can definitely get unique on those slates and think you're going to win them at a high enough probability. I just, I can tell that the contest sim people aren't always getting to full uniqueness, right? Because like Osimo or whatever, he's popping on the under fives every time, but he's not popping on the uniques every time. And so I think it has to be some sort of a slate dependent consideration for whether uniqueness is possible, right? So like for me, I know how to get there every time. I'm just not comfortable with well yeah it. i mean and, and and the thing is it's it's with the um the different ways you can play like you could you could do saber sim don't run a contest sim and do a filter for geo mean and just be done with it right or and then you end up you know with with with, with 100 percent uh grandson or whatever whatever it is yeah, right. captain or whatever it is. um or you know you could <laughs> run a uh you could you leave money on the table or you could do whatever but what happens is is like you said there's going to be stuff you don't feel comfortable with and then what happens in that respect is you're going to run whatever form is necessary to to what's the word I'm looking for to conform with what your biases are in the first place, you know. And I do that like in hockey a lot. I'll run, I'll and I'll go through my process every day. I'll run the thing. I'm like, okay, so I run a Sabersome thing, and I'm getting under a Saber score. I'm getting 100% Nashville. Well, I don't want to do that. Let's see if uh, let's see if using the contest sims will get me something better. You know, so so then the contest sims will run, and they'll say. Well, I'm getting 80%. I don't know about that. Let me make Min Uniques 3 or something like that. And then I'll say, okay, now I'm 40%. So obviously this is the one that, that's uh, that's appropriate because now this is what I wanted to do in the first place. You know, so so they give you all these different different ways right. to, to, to confirm your biases. Yep. No, that's definitely true. And I mean, at the end of the day, I guess I don't have any real problem with that because part of my whole thing is like I your agree. gut is part of the helpful. process, right? So, I mean, you can't cut your gut out. And although you're right, I do like the idea of like, individual ownership's not as important to me like how how you know you do when you play a chalk whatever chalk bus obviously probably actually maybe that is interesting i don't know but my general thesis is that individual player ownerships are less important than you know correlations and stuff but having that sort of own play analysis you know that definitely i don't want i don't think i'd like to give it to people based on players just because people do the wrong thing with that like oh i don't want to play jaron jackson jr ever because right. yeah his average is probably pretty bad i mean when he fouls out he's gonna really really hurt you but that's not why, you know, don't do that tonight with Jaron Jackson. Are you are you able now? Again, I know these some of these other guys were able to do it before the actual contest sims came out. I'm going to get back to contest sims with you in a second. I know that if people were running sims before they actually became you know, whatever, I know Will was doing it from Saber Sim. I know a lot of people were doing it. Um, were you ever able to run? And this is again, I okay. So in poker, uh, midway through a uh, a tournament, you could assess what your expected. Uh, uh, ROI, your expected money cash, okay, uh, is based on your chip stack, right? And, mm -hmm. and and when you are playing a DFS contest, the best, all that they show you on DraftKings is winnings, which is obviously stupid, okay? Right. Um, and you would think that that there'd be a way to calculate how much you are actually expected to win given, okay, number one, who you have, number two, what they were owned, number three, what everybody else owned, number four, and number four, even in late swap sports, what's people are likely to play given who they have and 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 whatever it is, because you know there's sites that try to do it. Like when you have, I don't know if you ever played on Yahoo. Yahoo, they show Yahoo you and FanDuel both. Yeah, right, they this and then project. But not only that, but like not even projected score, but Yahoo says projected winnings. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. Winnings yeah, and projected winnings. I, you, know, I don't know how, how they do it, but but they 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 have to do. It. They have to be able to do it. And I think that from a first of all from a a user perspective, that would be an amazing thing to know. If it worked. You know? <laughs> like, if it worked. I play enough Yahoo to let you know. It doesn't always work that no, good. No, it doesn't. Well, okay, it, it doesn't work. But if, if you have the ability to run Sims, I you would think that, I mean, again, that's another future future thing you could do with your brain is figure out a way to, to, to play to someone, boy, you're winning zero now, but you know what? If things run normal, you're going to be winning 600,000, <laughs> like whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, definitely so late swap. I, I've got a right now. I, I really like the way that's working within the Saber Sim too. I do though, as a person who views it as kind of an art, still like for the big lineups. You know, every night I'm running hundred bucks behind one or something. Then I'll be making the late swaps on those myself and considering every possible pair myself because 
I think I can do that. I think I can get, you know, know all of the games that are coming. For some reason, I've decided to make, you know, knowledge of every single roster part of my life. And when it's gone for the summer, I, I definitely feel bereft. So I like all this news that comes in all day long. And I feel like reacting to that late, probably going to be good for me. Well, the other problem is like, I haven't figured out how to import my projections from the last run of Saber Sim into my like first run of late swap. So it involves like, I have to do a whole bunch of stuff to actually yeah. machine mechanically late swap. So I, there's all sorts of good solutions. What I'm saying is I think I have, there's a good solution out there already for this, like in Saber Sim, right? The, you can rank by live expectation of, of yeah. uh, if you, lineups. If, if you look, so. I did a, I did a, actually a live thing. If you go to, the, to our YouTube channel, I, I did a whole thing with Jordan the other day um, where, yeah. Where he, I, I just actually walked myself through a, a light swept thing live and struggled over it and fumbled over it because you know, this is what this is what people want to see, like people Absolutely. fumble over. It. So, so I, so I wanted to do that too, but now I'm just going to forward people to your video because that <laughs> yeah, is a hard so thing to do, man. Right, That's right, and all the things it. that you could you could you could screw up or something like that. But um, but yeah, I think you could do what you're what you were you were trying to do. And um, now here's the other thing about late swap. Again, I don't know if you ever thought about this, but but obviously, you know. People, the people that are able to be at their computer all night long, it's a huge, just like ridiculous edge. And if you're not, you're basically joined dead. It's even mm -hmm. worse than that because as, if you think about it another way, people say, well, if I'm doing well, I'll do this. If I'm not doing well, I'll do that. I mean, technically you should always late swap, like regardless right. of what your lineups are. Because if you think if you think about it- We have to like, weigh all the results. Yeah, all the possibilities. If you know, the, it's, it's like, kind of like- Oh, the Monty Hall problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like the reverse Monty Hall problem. Yeah, you know, that's not exactly what I was going to say. It's like the reverse Monty Hall problem. It's like, if you, well, regardless of what you have, there's right. got to be something better. You know, you, maybe you don't right. know what it is, but, but, and maybe you do more damage than, than, than good, but you should be always late swapping whenever you have new information. So, so right. again, not to make it even harder to win, but well, it's definitely harder to play to play optimally. But that's 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 the uh, that that's 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 what I thought you find interesting. Um, oh, for sure. Yeah, I, I hadn't thought about it that way. That's very valuable to me because I definitely. And here's, and, here's, and here's one more thing, and then we'll get back to your thing in just a second. Sure. Is um, I I spoke to Andy again, uh, uh, update with Saber Sim and all the contest sim stuff, and I asked him a really weird question. I said, you know, it's weird that that three months ago there wasn't a single site that offered contest right. sims. And now all of a sudden they all do. And I asked him, was there like some, you know, like technological advancement that all of a sudden people could just turn on and do whatever, or was it some like industry based thing or something? And he gave me kind of like the industry history of like, uh, it was weird. I'm like, the one, not to share too much, but he was saying that like stochastic reached out to them to maybe help power their new contest sim thing and Saber Sim, I don't even charge them too much or whatever it was. So right. it seems as though they kind of like shared stuff or whatever it is. But 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 he kept on saying that well ours is better because of this. And I'm like, this is this is this. You don't want to compare one to the other. I'm like, it doesn't even matter. Okay. Right. Because and people are saying, well, the contest sim thing is going to destroy the ecosystem and, and all this stuff. Forgetting the fact that you know you can out sim the sims or whatever it is. I do want to share something with you. And this is, I think you'll, maybe you'll appreciate it, maybe you won't. Your brother might appreciate it more. So yeah. what this is, this is my, one of my old poker sites. And this goes back, right, it's 2006, okay? So what these are just like, are like tools that, you know, that, that, that calculate whether you're supposed to open raise, whether you're supposed to shove, just different, different things that at this time was completely unheard of. You know, like nobody had this. And, and the funny thing is, is I created it literally on a flight to Florida with my son's coloring book and crayons to do the algebra on the back of the, on the back of the whatever. Okay. So nonetheless, this was like a really, really big deal. And nobody had this now within about a year or two, this was all either viewed as outdated uh stolen from or whatever it was and now you look at this anybody that plays poker look back at this and say oh my god this is so bad like this is like trash okay but at the time it was like it was innovative whatever it is so i told andy it doesn't matter because in two years i swear you're gonna look back at what you have now and you're gonna say this is trash okay right. and it will happen so so don't worry right now about like whether there are tweaks to be made and whether yours is better or whatever because i'm telling you they're all terrible it yeah. just that's the way technology works. So well, it's, it's the way business works too, right? I mean, right. not to be too, uh, right. yeah. 
it's just like, like it gotta sell something right like it so like it's an upgrade and it is like it's cool the thing that it's selling like it makes sense as a valuable addition but also like a value addition, valuable addition to what was supposedly already a very valuable product, right? So that's what, to me, like at the end of the day, what is that addition? I'm not really getting enough playthrough. I'm not playing through like hundreds of thousands of dollars. So if the difference is like 5%, that for me is like, you know, I'm not peanuts, but $1,000 a year. It's not covering the cost of the, the tool. You know what I mean? So that's uh, yeah, where I wind up on the contest sims is, yeah, they're great. And it makes sense as a way to play them. But from principal component analysis as a like math person, I can tell you, you got to win. You got to win. That's all you need to know for your <laughs> contest simulating. As long as you're, I mean, it's true. Some people probably play three maxes with complex payout structures or whatever. I don't do that. I only play the big GPPs and I try to win them because I know the strategy for the big GPPs is to win them. Like I don't really understand the strategy. I don't like trying to min cash. I don't, I don't value playing cash games. Like the idea, you never find out what the best lineup was on any slate. So why would you try to play for the optimal lineup and beat people at it? That's not what you find out at the end of every slate. It would just be painful for me to lose at cash ever. So well, me, that's the reason me, I don't play me, cash. To me, it's just not interesting at all. Um, exactly. Like, it doesn't answer any question. Like, I, at least at the end of the night, whoever wins the GPP found the optimal lineup. You know what I mean? Like, that's not what you're trying. It's not answering a math question. So I don't know how to. Well, not only that, I mean, like, again, not to get too, too much about me, but I, I run a hedge fund, you know, full time. And this is why I did DFS because it's very similar, you know, like, like it's one thing to know what a good company is, but a good company doesn't necessarily mean it's a good stock, for example. And if right. something is a good stock, doesn't necessarily mean it's a good stock today because of price, right? And right. just because something's a good stock today doesn't mean that that one stock should be like duplicated 10 times in the same portfolio. You know, like some stocks go work better with other stocks, you know, right. and, and likewise, stuff, yeah. and even if you find 10 good stocks that work well together, you know, it depends on what type of portfolio you want. Like if you want a really high upside, high upside uh, portfolio, you give me 10 stocks with, with, we're very, very consistent, you know, whatever, maybe that's not exactly what I want. You know, mm -hmm. I, I want the, the, uh, the, the high, the 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 high uh variance, yeah. and low whatever so like similarly to like you want to play the, the 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 lottery gpp those types of lineups should be different you know than than lineups that are playing whatever so that's the kind of thing that always interested me and then to interpol you know to put leverage and and ownership and things like that that's 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 that you know that's where my brain explodes you know so that's why I, that's why i enjoy this um so mm -hmm. you know i i guess i'm going to what what else should should I tell people about except for the YouTube channel? Because that's all that I know. Yeah, about. let me see. Um, yeah, that's that's most of. I mean, we got the Discord as well. There might oh, be. So a wait, link. Is, there, is there a link to Discord? Yeah, in check there? check in the about. It might be dead. I might have to in the about of the. Uh, yeah. So on the game two of the final, game one of the finals, there's an arrow at the top under the thing under uh in the bio. So bio Bone Dog's hot right now. He won the ticket. Blah blah blah. Let me just see here. So like here. Oh, uh, not in the individual. I haven't done that. Oh, it will, it will be on a tweet later today. So I'm not sure when this comes out, but it might be my latest okay. tweet. First, has a Discord. First, first off is everybody should follow him on Twitter. Okay. Right. So that's that's the other first. place. Good catch. Good catch. And, and you mentioned, I, you put somewhere in that you have this picket thing. What What is that? What, what is picket actually? Oh, yeah. So I, I occasionally will give out um, pick them uh, choices for like prize picks or underdog if there's edge, you know, and I catch it. Basically, I'm going to have some money coming to me from underdog. You know, it's the whatever every week thing from weekly winners. So at the beginning of the week, I will play some pick them picks and you can fault track me there on picket to see that I have won whatever 10% lifetime ROI and et cetera. But it's like I say, like my ROI in, in DFS is much higher. That's why I put most of my focus there during the seasons. But at the same time, sometimes you just can't make a play on news in DFS, right? It's, you, yeah. you, you buy your phone, you got time, you know exactly what's going to happen. You know, prize picks is a little bit slower to pull their picks than underdogs, so you put something down. So that's my general thing. But it's not, oh yeah, it's not, I wouldn't necessarily uh, point people there as uh, directly as the YouTube and the Twitter stuff for DFS. So for those for those that you know that have been asking me, you know, what I what I you know, who I respect or whatever, what I think you guys should do, I mean, I would not I mean, embarrass him a little bit more here. Is as I would definitely follow him on Twitter and and subscribe to his YouTube channel and whatever else he has going on because probably in about I don't know how, how old are you now? Are you thirty? Oh, thanks. No, I'm oh, geez. Much older than that, 1984. So we're okay. pushing 40 now. Okay. Yeah. So, so within about 
two years, maybe three years, he's not going to be doing DFS anymore. He's going to be doing something much smarter, you know, with his, with his brain. I mean, I, I promise you that. Um, so, so while he is still doing DFS and, and I want to say wasting his time, but, but using his brain on this, you probably should listen to what he has to say because um, he's uh, he's number one, honest. Number two, I was about, I was about to get into your, into your thing. I was about to go into, into, into the pace of your, of your Jack Handy thing. I was going to, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going there though. Uh, uh, well, he, he was he was good enough. He was strong enough. I, I wasn't going to do that. Um, he's 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 a smart dude. He shares a lot, and he's got a lot of very good thoughts on on DFS. And you, you should go to his the playlist. Uh, some of these are, are really interesting. I wish I had time to do more of the uh, the, the evergreen stuff. But he's a, he's a smart dude that everybody should follow. And uh, listen, I, I I thought you were younger, you know, but I'm I still yeah. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna root. And I see that you are, your most important is you have your little boy in, in the background. Um, not anymore, but um, yeah, I got to check on that pretty soon. Yeah. Congratulations on not to get into it. Congratulations on SAG. Uh, and uh, I guess that'll do it. Uh, uh, awesome. Appreciate it. Thanks here? so much. Anything? All right. Good. All right. Everybody. Uh, good luck, everybody. And uh, I'll talk to you later. That was Thanks. awesome. Uh, great job. And I'll, I'll post it on Twitter and I'll tag you as well. Awesome, dude. I'll retweet. All right, enjoy, it. I'll enjoy talking to you. Okay.